Most people think dying would be bad for them, and so they fear it. Is that fear rational? The ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus says no. He argues that death, as the permanent extinction of consciousness, is not bad, so we should not fear it. The Roman philosopher Lucretius agrees, and he defends Epicurus. If Epicurus and Lucretius are right, then fear of death is irrational. But are they right? Death, Epicurus argued, cannot touch us because while we exist, death is not present, and when death is present, we no longer exist. Since death cannot touch us, it cannot be bad. Fear is rational only for something bad. So Epicurus concludes that fearing death is pointless. To be clear, the issue is being dead, not dying, since while dying we still exist. Dying can be awful and so rightly feared. Common sense has long recoiled to Epicurus. Surely death is bad if it deprives us of the goods of life. Granted, if continued life would be terrible, then death might not deprive. But if it does deprive us of good experiences, then it is bad because it is bad to be deprived of any good. This common sense reaction to Epicurus plays right into Lucretius's hands. For if we say that death is bad because it deprives us of time alive, then when we were born also deprives us of time alive, since we could have been born earlier than we were, or whenever we began to exist. However, since no one fears missing out on time before they were born, they should not fear missing out on time after they die. Lucretius writes, Look back again to see how the past ages of everlasting time before we were born have been as naught to us. These then nature holds up to us as a mirror of the time that is to come, when we are dead and gone. Is there aught that looks terrible in this, aught that seems gloomy? Is it not a calmer rest than any sleep? If we concede that being born late is just as bad as dying early, then maybe we should lament both when we were born and when we will die. However, this is hard to believe and even harder to actually do. Alternatively, even if our non-existence before birth and after death both deprive, maybe death deprives us of something we care about, whereas we are indifferent to time we missed before we were born. That is, we could simply have a preference for the future. However, even if true, this preference merely explains why we care about missing future goods by dying when we will instead of the goods we missed by being born when we were. Lucretius's claim is that our preference is irrational, since the two periods of non-existence are symmetrical, so we should have similar attitudes toward them. Lucretius can even agree that we are biased toward the future. That, he would say, is the problem. Here's a more promising response. I might die later than I will, but I could not have been born earlier than I was. Anyone born earlier would not be me, because different gametes would produce a different individual. If so, then I can rationally lament the one, but not the other. But here's a problem. If particular gametes determine one's identity, in vitro fertilization, IVF, shows how the same human being could exist earlier. If the embryo from which a person developed were implanted earlier than it was, it seems that that same person could have existed earlier than she did. The earlier IVF human being would indeed be identical to the later one, but the term human being is ambiguous between human organism, which is a biological concept, and person, which is a metaphysical concept. Permanent coma victims, for example, are obviously human organisms, but not persons in the sense in which you are a person, namely as a center of rational self-awareness. Conversely, Superman, were he to exist, would be a person in that sense, though obviously not a member of our species. So the embryo could have been implanted earlier, which would have resulted in the same human organism as the later implanted embryo. But would it have given rise to the same person? We care about the details of our lives, our concerns, memories, hopes, relationships, and all that makes our lives worth living matter to each of us. That is what death threatens. Call this our thick personhood, to distinguish it from the bare human organism shorn of one's biographical life. So even if an earlier existing human organism would be identical to a later existing one, that is not what matters to each of us. If I die tomorrow, I can nevertheless easily imagine extending my established biography past tomorrow. But I cannot imagine my biography beginning earlier than it did. How, for example, could I have met my wife before she was born? Unless we can somehow push everything back in time in lockstep unison, 
Our thick personhoods cannot possibly exist earlier than they do. We cannot be deprived of impossible things, such as the cake we ate yesterday. Since it is impossible for thick persons to exist earlier than they do, one cannot be deprived of time before birth, but it is possible to die later than one will so we can be deprived of that time. If so, this answers Lucretius. So to return to the intuitive response to Epicurus, since death typically deprives us of good life experiences, that's what makes it bad, thus justifying some appropriate level of fear. That's what most of us thought initially, and it looks like we were right.